everybody. Welcome back. We're here another week of our Bible lessons with Miss Megan. I'm back here in the church this week, and boy, it feels good to be back. It was great to see some of you over the past couple of days. Oh, I just miss your smiling faces so much. For those of you who have started kinder or maybe even elementary school, I'm so proud of you for doing all that you're doing at home. I know it's hard, but we just got to keep going and keep doing what we're doing, just like we're doing here at the church. Now, Miss Megan's here again today, and she's going to work on our lessons about Moses. You all remember what last week was? Right, the Ten Commandments. I think she's going to do a little bit more about that today, but I'm not quite sure. So let's go see what she's got for us. Hi, boys and girls. I'm so excited you're back with us this week to continue learning about Moses. God used him in such mighty ways, and he wants to use us in great ways, too. And we can use our buddy Moses as an example for how to be obedient to God and all he asks us to do. So let's start our day with prayer. Let's bow our heads and you be my echo. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for another chance to love you and love others. Thank you for our lessons about Moses. Help us to learn from them. Amen. Great job, boys and girls. Let's sing about Jesus loving us because we know it's true. The Bible tells us so, and we know every single word in the Bible is true. Let's get our Jesus hands ready. Good job. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Great job. I love singing that song every week because it just is such a good reminder that Jesus loves us all the time. Whether we had a good week or a bad week or a medium week or an exciting week or a boring week, Jesus loves us all the time. So singing that just helps me remember it. So our buddy over here, tell me about it. What do you remember? What's his name? Good, Moses. And Miss Becca started us way back when Moses was just a tiny baby. What do you remember from those stories? That's right. His mama had to put him in a basket. She made a basket and put him in the Nile River, but his sister was watching out for him. Her name was Miriam. Good, then what happened? Good, a princess found him and took him up out of the water. And she realized that he was one of the Hebrew babies or Israelite babies, one of God's people. And so she decided to adopt him, but she needed somebody to take care of him while he was a little baby. So what did his big sister Miriam do? Good, she ran off and got their mama. So their mama still, even though she had put Moses in the river and trusted him to God, God brought him right back to her so she got to take care of him when he was a baby baby until he was ready to live in the palace where he grew up in the palace. And Miss Becca taught us that God was with Moses the whole time he was growing up from the time he was born and his mama put him in that basket in the river. God was with him all the time and God is with us too, right? So we we learned that all through those lessons and God stayed with him even when he grew up as one of the Egyptian princes in the palace with, ooh, what was that king? What do we call the king of Egypt? Do you remember? Pharaoh. That's right, Pharaoh. And just like sometimes there's good kings and bad kings, sometimes there were good pharaohs and sometimes there were not so good pharaohs. So the pharaoh that was in charge then, he made all of God's people, all the Israelites, be slaves. Do you remember what it means to be a slave? That's right. You have to do lots and lots of work, anything they tell you to do, and they don't even pay you. So that was very frustrating for 
God's people. They were sad. They were worked so hard. They worked out in the sun all day. They were tired and they weren't even being paid for their work. So they prayed and prayed and prayed to God for him to send them someone to help them. Well, meanwhile, Moses, and remember God was with his people all this time. God was with Moses all this time while he was growing up in the palace. And eventually Moses realized that he did not belong with the Egyptians. He was not an Egyptian. He was an Israelite, one of God's people. And so he ran away from the palace. And he, what did he do? Do you remember what kind of his job was or what he was doing out in the desert? He was tending sheep like a shepherd, exactly. And God called him to be his special helper. We'll talk more specifically about that in a few minutes because I bet you remember how he called him. It was pretty exciting, wasn't it? So now we know that God is still with him even that he's a even now that he's a grown-up. And so he calls Moses to be his special helper, and he wants us to be his helpers too. So we learned that the way Moses started off being his helper was by doing what? Good, he was going to help God's people out of Egypt, but first he had to obey God, remember? And that's our way. One of the ways that we can be God's special helpers is by obeying what he asks us to do. And sometimes he asks us to do things through our parents or our teachers or um, maybe police officers or pastors. So when we obey the people that God puts in charge of us, then we are being God's special helpers. So... Off Moses goes, back to Egypt. He was afraid, but he knew that God was with him, and he had been obedient to be God's special helper, and he leads the Israelites, God's people, out of Egypt. And so they've been walking through the desert. They're probably hot and tired, and they get to the Red Sea. And so they decide to set up camp, put up their tents, and decide to rest there before they figure out how to get across the big Red Sea. Well, as they're resting there by the Red Sea, what do they hear? Do you remember? That's right. Pharaoh had changed his mind and the Egyptian army was after the Israelites. Pharaoh wanted them to come back and be his slaves again. And they were scared. Oh my goodness. Here comes the Egyptian army after them. They were afraid. So they cry out to Moses and so whenever we've learned in our lessons before this, that whenever we have a problem, who do we go to? God, every time. So that's where Moses goes. Moses goes to God and God tells him to lift up his staff, that walking stick type of thing he had, lift up his staff. And what happened? Yes, the Red Sea just split in two, big walls of water on each side, and the Israelites got to walk right through on dry land. Remember that lesson? We pretended we were looking up kind of like this, where we were seeing fish on both sides as they walked through. Who knows what else they saw in there? That must have been so incredible. A miracle, something that only God could do. So they got to the other side, but the Egyptian army was still chasing them. So even though they were safe and dry on the other side, they weren't out of trouble yet. But God, but God, he wants to keep us safe. So then he closed the waters of the Red Sea and the Egyptian army was not able to come after them. They were drowned in the Red Sea. So God took care of them right through something so impossible for us. But with God, all things are possible. The Bible tells us that too. So then we get to last week. That was a lot of, a lot of remembering. You guys did a great job. And last week, we learned that God loves us and wants to keep us safe and happy. And one way he does that is by giving us some special rules. Do you remember these special rules? We call them the Ten Commandments. So I gave you a hint. How many rules are there? Good. Ten. Ten rules. God gave us them. And commandments is a big word that can mean rules, but really it's the things that God commands us to do or not do. Command tells us to do or not to do. And so that's where we pick up this week. We learned that God wrote them on stone tablets and sent them with Moses, and he didn't send them on a napkin or a piece of paper that could get balled up and thrown away, but on stone, because they were to last forever. 
All right, so that's where we pick up this week, and we're actually going to stay on the Ten Commandments. And today, we're going to learn about how God loves us and wants us to love Him. Hmm. God loves us, and He wants us to love Him. Do you love God? I love God. So that sounds like kind of an easy one, doesn't it? But then when we start t t like thinking about it, did you know that God wanted us to love him? That that's something that's important to God? It seems like God would have, you know, a lot of really important things to do. And whether or not one of us loves him or not, would that make a difference? I don't know. It's kind of hard to understand. But it turns out that God loves us and wants us to love him. So what are some ways we can love God? How do we show God that we love him? I mean, it would be kind of hard to buy him a present or even make him a card. That's how I used to show my mom and dad that I love them, maybe. So how do we show God that we love him? Oh, I see some wheels turning out there. I know this is a hard question, isn't it? But what are some things that God likes us to do? Good. Pray. Pray is just talking to God, and he loves to hear from us. So when we pray, that is a way we show God we love him. What's another way? Reading the Bible. Good job. Reading the Bible. Reading God's word. That's a way we show him that we love him. Even Bible storybooks, the ones with the pictures in them and things like that, that's a great way to show God we love him. We could pick a book about My Little Pony or about Paw Patrol, or we could pick the Bible. And those books aren't bad. You can read those too, but God loves when we take the time to read about him as well and look at the pictures from our storybooks. Great job. So another way we can show God we love him is by obeying his special rules, obeying his special rules. And remember, we learned a song about that. We will listen and obey. So we're going to sing that right now. Do you remember it? We've been practicing. Help me out. We will listen and obey. Yes, Lord, yes, we will. We will listen and obey. Yes, Lord, yes, we will. With a yes, Lord, here and a yes, Lord, there. Here, yes, there, yes, everywhere, yes, yes, we will listen and obey. Yes, Lord, yes, we will. Great job. So that's what he wants us to do with the Ten Commandments is to listen to them and obey them. And that the Bible tells us to obey God's commands, and that goes right into our memory verse. We've been, I love weeks like this when things start all coming together. So we've been talking about it in little pieces each week, but now we see how our song and our verse and our stories, they all go right together. So do you remember our Bible verse with its big long address? Psalm 119.69b. Good. Be my echo one time. I obey your commandments with all my heart. Psalm 119, 69b. Good job. Okay, two times with me. That's our only practice round this time. We've been doing it for this our fourth week, so let's do it together. I obey. You ready? I obey your commandments with all my heart. Psalm 119, 69b. One more time. I obey your commandments with all my heart. Psalm 119, 69b. Great job. So the Bible tells us to obey God's commandments. Oh, I just love how it all fits together. Okay, remind me again, how many special rules did God give us? 10. That's right. So let's get our slack claps ready. And we're going to go over the 10 commandments. You ready? You be my echo. We did this last week, but you can still be my echo because there's lots of them. Got your slap claps ready? Slap claps ready? All right. I'm your only God. It's true. Don't worship idols. Oh, no. Respect my name and don't be rude. Keep the Sabbath holy. Please.
please obey your mom and dad. Don't kill people, oh how bad. Please stay married, you'll be glad. Don't steal things from others. Never ever tell a lie. Don't wish for things your neighbors buy. Follow God's rules and you'll be safe and very happy. Great job, boys and girls, keeping up with the slaps and the claps. Envy and my echo is hard to do, but you did a super job. And that was all 10 commandments. Now today, we are gonna focus on the first four. And oh my goodness, I just said how much I love when everything starts coming together. I want you to think real hard when you're up at church, there's something that we say at our church, it's specific or special for our church. It has four words. Starts with love. Anybody know what we say at our church all the time? I heard it. Good job. Love God, love others. Say it after me. Love God, love others. Great. And that's what our church is all about. That's what our church wants to show the world is that we love God first and we love others. And that's exactly what our lessons this week and next week are going to show us that that's what God wants us to do. And he even put that in to his 10 special rules. And even my silly little poster that I just bought at a store has it set up that way. For those of you going to kindergarten, if there is 10 commandments, 10 commandments, and you split them in half, usually when you split them in half, it would be five on one stone and five on the other stone. But that's not the way God designed it. God made the first four rules, one, two, three, four, about loving God, and the other six about loving others. So he didn't, it's fine that it's not even, I'm just saying that when we do things, we usually split it in halves, but God doesn't have to do things the easy way. So he did four rules, about loving God and six more rules about loving others. And the four rules about loving God come first because that's what we do first. We love God and when we love God, that helps us to love others. Don't tell anybody I told you this, but some people can be a little bit hard to love. So when we love God first, he makes it easier for us to love all those others even when they're not being so nice. Like little brothers sometimes. Yeah, sometimes hard to love, I understand. So God had it all figured out for us. So today we're focused on the rules about loving God. So I want you to be my echo. These are a little bit harder to say, but I want you to know what they are outside of our, um, our rhyme, our slap, clap, rhyme. Makes it easy for us to kind of remember them, but it doesn't really tell us exactly what they are. So let's talk about each one. Be my echo. You shall have no other gods before me. Good job. That's number one. No other gods, one God. One God that we worship. No other gods. Number two, you shall not make for yourself an idol. That was a mouthful. But what that means is we shouldn't worship anything but God. We should spend most of our time, most of our love focused on God. So we shouldn't love Pokemon more than God. We shouldn't love our teddy bears more than God. So we don't make anything more important than God. Number three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Good. And this is one that we hear people doing all the time when they're mad about something. And Miss Megan doesn't even like to say it, but um, some people will say, oh my God. And I don't even like to say it myself, even to teach you, because when we say, oh my God, it should be to worship him and say, oh my God, I love you so much. But some people say it when they're mad. And they kind of shout it out, or they might shout Jesus's name, 
or something like that when they're mad or angry or um, frustrated with something. And God tells us in his commandments not to do that. His name is the most special name in the world, and we should never use it for anything but talking to him, telling others about how wonderful he is, praising him. Those are reasons we can use God's name, not because we're mad and yelling about something and just shouting it out. Not okay. Okay, last one for today. Number four, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Great. And that means that we need to set aside special time, a special day for God. Um, most, most people choose Sunday. That just seems like the easy one because we already go to church on Sunday. So we just leave that whole day for God and our family. But sometimes life doesn't work quite like that. And so it's, God is telling us here, save some special time for me. I should have some special time in your life that's all mine. And it shouldn't be um, just, oh, wow, I have five free minutes. I'll spend them with God. That's great to do if you have five free minutes. But this says by keeping it holy. There should be a time in your life that's always set apart for God. This is God's time. I'm not doing anything else during that time. This is God's time. Nothing is more important than him. They all go together. They all tell us how to love God. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I just love how it all works together. Okay, let's go to our Bible book. We're going to review again a little more. Who's our, who's our buddy? Good, Moses. Moses, he's out in the desert watching his sheep. And who talks to him? That's right, God does. Where does God talk to him from? That was not a good sentence, Miss Megan. But where does, the, where does he hear the voice? From the bush. That's right. And what was very unusual about the bush? It's weird. It was on fire, but it did not burn up. You guys are so smart. You guys are so smart. You could be teaching the class. That's right. And so what does God ask Moses to do or tell him he wants him to do? To be his special helper. Good job. So now Moses is God's special helper. And Moses tells him he wants him to lead his people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So Moses does. He's scared, but he goes to Pharaoh. And remember, Pharaoh sends all those bad, bad plagues. Or excuse me, God sends all those bad plagues because Pharaoh is not letting the people go. But finally, he says, get out of here. Just go. Take your people and go. So Moses leads the Israelites out. They get to the Red Sea. They're resting. We talked about this. And then comes in. The Egyptian army is after them. But Moses goes to God. Who made the water split in two? Did Moses do that? No, it's God's power. God used Moses to do that. And that's what we want to do too. We want to say, God, use us for anything. We don't have the power to split a sea in half. Moses did not have the power to split the sea in half. God has that power, which he gave to Moses to hold up that staff and the waters parted. And then he put him back down after the Israelites were across so that the Egyptian army could not get them. All right. So we're going to start reading. Okay. Miss Megan needs to lean a little bit at, because now we're to where we were last week when God gives him the 10 commandments. After God's people escaped from Egypt, they camped in the desert. Then Moses went up on a mountain to talk to God. God gave Moses special rules for everyone to follow. We call those rules the Ten Commandments. It's kind of neat that my words are pointing out at the top. For my kiddos that are learning to read the Ten Commandments, and that's for my poster. It's kind of neat that they, point, point, that they stick out over the top of our book. When Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, he saw the people worshiping a golden calf. Oh my goodness, God's people. This made God very sad. God wants us to love and worship him and only him. He wants to be the most important part of our lives. But sometimes we make bad choices. And even God's people, back when this was all happening, they made a bad choice. Moses had been up on the mountain for a long time. They were afraid he was never coming back. So they decided to worship something else that was right there with them, thinking that that would help them. 
is there anything that can give us the same help God can give us? Never. And that golden thing didn't help them at all. At all. It just made God sad when he saw that they were not worshiping him. Remember our Ten Commandments, the ones that talk about loving God, say, you shall not make for yourself an idol. They made for themselves an idol. That's exactly what he told them not to do. And he put it in these Ten Commandments and told them, don't do it again. So, we want to obey. Now, this side is the one about loving God. God wants us to follow the Ten Commandments too. Following the Ten Commandments shows that we love God. I want you to look at this page. Can you find the children in this picture who are showing their love for God? What are some ways you see that they are showing their love for God? Good. You saw these two children praying. They are kneeling down and praying, talking to God. That's a great way to show God that they love him. Good. How about these guys? They've got their Bibles and their Bible storybooks to learn more about God. Good. What's this little girl pointing to? The church. Going to church is a way we show God we love him. And do you see anybody in their pajamas on this page? No, me neither. So even getting ready to go to church is something that we do because we love God. We don't roll out of bed. Well, at least I hope we don't roll out of bed, leave our hair, not brush our teeth, and just get in the car with no shoes and say, fine, I'm going to church like this. We put a little effort. We take some time to get ready because we want to be our best selves for God, right? When it's something important, we get ready for it. Church is important, so we get ready for it. And then this little boy over here has his hands raised, eyes closed. What does it look like he's doing? Singing or praising God, maybe? Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. What are other ways that we can show God we love him? Here we saw praying, reading our Bible and storybooks, going to church, getting ready for church, praising and worshiping God. Can you think of anything else that we talked about today? Good. Obeying. That's kind of the biggest one right there. All of these kiddos are doing things that go along with the loving God commandments. So yes, when we obey those commandments, it makes God happy. And I'm going to tell you another one. Learning about God makes him happy too. When you make a new friend, you're out on the playground and you meet a new person and you start playing together, do you ask them any questions? Good, you usually say, what is your name? So you don't keep going, hey kid, hey kid, come here. You say, oh, Johnny, it's nice to meet you. Johnny, do you have any brothers and sisters? Johnny, do you like ice cream? Johnny, do you have a cat at your house? You ask your new friend questions so that you can learn about them. Same thing with God. When we learn about God, we are showing him that we care about him, that we want to get to know him, and that we love him. So even watching these lessons shows God that we love him. We've done such a great job today, boys and girls. I'm so proud of how much you're remembering about Moses. We just have one more week learning about Moses, and then we're going to switch gears. And I have a song that we're going to... Uh, and Miss Megan just got mixed up because the last way I wanted to talk to you about how we can show God that we love him is when we thank him. So in addition to these ways over here, we also can be obedient to God. We can learn about God and we can thank God. That's another way to show him we love him. When we acknowledge all the great things he does and all the things he does for us and for our world, that makes him very happy too. So we're going to sing a song about thanking God, and I'm going to sing it first, and then I'm going to stand up and we'll add some actions, okay? Let me see. Let me get the tune in my head. All right, I think I'm ready. We thank God in many ways. Clap our hands, sing his praise. We thank God in many ways because we love him. All right? So that's really easy. And there's going to be another verse too, but it's a lot like it. All right, I want everybody up. You, every, you too. I'm waiting. Thank you. Okay, everybody's up. Give it a little stretch, a little wiggle. Okay, so I'm going to teach you in sign language when you say thank you, you put your hand up to your mouth 
and then point to the person you're thanking. So it's thank you. That's in sign language. Thank you. And we're going to use that for the we thank God part. Okay. We thank God in many ways. Be my echo. We thank God in many ways. Good. Clap our hands. Sing his praise. Good. We thank God in many ways because we love him. Good job. And the second verse is exactly the same. Instead of clap our hands and sing his praise, we're going to hop and jump and sing his praise. Okay, so that's the only thing that swishes. You ready? Do it with me. We're going to go through it two whole times. So you can jump in on the second part if you get confused the first time. You ready? We thank God in many ways. Clap our hands, sing his praise. We thank God in many ways because we love him. We thank God in many ways. Jump and hop, sing his praise. We thank God in many ways because we love him. Good. Let's go through it one more time. We thank God in many ways, clap our hands, sing his praise. We thank God in many ways because we love him. We thank God in many ways, jump and hop, sing his praise. We thank God in many ways because we love him. You all did such a great job today, boys and girls, and you've got lots of songs to praise God with to show him we love him. We can be thankful. We can be obedient. We can learn our lessons to learn about him, read our Bibles and our storybooks, and pray anytime we want to. And hopefully, we'll all get to come back to church soon. God understands right now if you can't come to church. But we're hoping that soon and very soon, we'll all be back together again. I love you guys. Let's bow our heads. Be my echo. Dear Jesus, thank you for your Ten Commandments. Thank you for showing us how to love you and love others. Help us to be more and more like you. Amen. I love you guys. Have a great week. Bye-bye.